I wasn't planning to come back to a race so soon. It'll be another few weeks before I'm ready to tackle the OP, but a scene in the most recent episode was so good that I felt compelled to do another scene analysis. The scene in question happens to be the one where the real killer confronts Satoru face to face, so, you know, massive spoilers lie ahead if you couldn't guess who it was from all the obvious clues. Spoilers start now. At this point in the story, Satoru has accomplished the bulk of what he set out to do when he first left back in time. His actions have saved Hinazuki both from the killer and from her mother, and he's managed to save the other victims, Aya and Hitomi, simply by hanging out with them more frequently. But the killer is still at large, and he has no shortage of lonely children to target. In fact, Satoru's own actions alienated one of his classmates, Misato Yanagihara, when he threw her attempt to bully Hinazuki back in her face. Concerned for her safety, Satoru follows her to a hockey rink, and then to the bathroom where she spends a suspiciously long amount of time. Just as he's getting worried, he bumps into Yashiro-sensei, who points his suspicions toward a truck that's driving away from the scene. Satoru hops in the car with him, and the scene begins. Now, if you've been paying even cursory attention to the series, alarm bells are probably going off in your head at this point. This is the second time Yashiro has just happened to show up right when one of the kidnappers' potential targets was at their most vulnerable. Plus, he had that glove box full of candy. Who but a child murderer keeps that much candy in their car? And the series has never been shy about framing him in a sinister manner, either. He almost always enters the scene with his face cloaked in shadow, and he's frequently shot from a low angle that makes him seem a little intimidating. Outside of that, the biggest warning sign in this scene lies in the set decoration. As I discussed briefly in my recent article for Crunchyroll, Erase likes to play around with color symbolism, and it has a particular fondness for the color red. When it's worn by characters, red symbolizes emotional warmth and vulnerability, but when it's seen in the environment, it signifies impending danger. Between the two and the truck they're tailing is a bright red car. Misato, who Satoru followed to get here, had a bright red backpack on. And in the earlier scene where Satoru initially decided that he would save her, we cut away to a traffic light ominously turning red. The entire series has been subconsciously priming us for this episode, creating the association between red and danger so that it can use it to ratchet up the tension. By the way, there's a bit of a continuity error here. Satoru has his seatbelt on in this shot, even though he hasn't been told to put it on yet. Now, pay attention to the order of events here. Satoru tells Yashiro that he and his friends have been playing detective, trying to stop an imaginary kidnapper. Only after hearing this does Yashiro tell Satoru to put on his seatbelt. This is the moment he decides to kill him. The seatbelt sticks, which Satoru thinks is strange, but before he can question it, Yashiro takes control of the scene. In this shot from the back seat, we see more of that red signposting. The way that the shots are cut together, we jump from the focus of the last one, Satoru's hands, to the red bag in the back seat. This bag, of course, contains the murder weapon. The motion as Yashiro goes for Satoru's seatbelt naturally draws our eyes upward, and the roof of the red car creates a line pointing directly directly from the red source of danger to the teacher. The motion as Yashiro fastens the seatbelt draws our eyes back down to the now uncovered clasp, which, hey, look at that, is also red. The red car drives onward as their car turns. The time for warnings has passed. When we cut back to the car's interior, we linger on the dashboard, where the heater is turned up all the way into the red. The danger is reaching its peak. The camera pans over to the steering wheel, where we linger on Yashiro's conspicuously black gloved hands. Now, driving with gloves on in the winter isn't inherently suspicious, but it's a little odd in a car with a heater turned up to high. Satoru discusses both his methods and motivations for keeping the kidnapper's victims safe. From here, we almost never see both Satoru and Yashiro's faces in frame at the same time. This emphasizes that Satoru isn't truly understanding his teacher. But we do get one wide shot of the two of them when Satoru tells Yashiro that he wants to fill the hole in his classmates' hearts. This line, which Yashiro originally fed Satoru to explain his own feelings, legitimately catches the teacher off guard. He's surprised to find an even deeper connection between the two of them than he first suspected. Unfortunately, Satoru looks away in embarrassment, giving up the one bit of power he'd won in the scene and losing his last chance of potentially changing what's about to happen. Yashiro quickly regains his resolve. He takes back control of the conversation by launching into a bullshit diatribe about 
about this philosophy. Instead of looking at his face, the camera focuses on him tapping his steering wheel with his index finger, then on Satoru. Since he's not really being honest, there's no reason to look at him. But when he says something he actually means, we get a good look at him in profile. His face is cold and emotionless as he declares that there's no real difference between good and evil deeds, that performing either is just a way of making up for a defect in ourselves, which is certainly true for Satoru to a point, though he still thinks of Yashiro's point of view as being extreme. Yashiro explains that he's been trying to get close to someone as well, and laments that the chase has been fun. As he does so, we cut to a shot of the rearview mirror, signifying that he's reminiscing. The subtext, of course, is that the chase is over. Confused, Satoru asks if he's talking about a girlfriend, which Yashiro quickly dismisses, although he admits that there's a similarity. His killing is motivated by a twisted longing not dissimilar to love. Again, he's being genuine here, so we focus on his face, though Satoru's face is obscured to show that he doesn't really factor into these thoughts. Satoru's attention shifts to the tapping fingers, a nervous tick which he assumes means his teacher wants candy. Reaching for the glove box, he finds only a packet of laxatives, and immediately the car drives into a tunnel. And now, suddenly, everything is red, because Satoru is surrounded by danger. Yashiro explains that there isn't any candy, but stops tapping his finger anyway, because even without it, he's about to satisfy his craving. And then he lets the cat out of the bag. The line is a little hammy and melodramatic, but it works to punctuate the scene. The lights of the tunnel also change the color of the white car, emphasizing the difference between it and the one Satoru rode in previously. Satoru looks up slowly as the tension builds, and at last we see a wicked smirk on Yashiro's face, his true colors finally revealed. Well, I say colors, but it's all cold and black like his suit. It becomes clear in this scene that his tie represents the token emotional gestures that he uses to hide his true nature as a remorseless killer. Now cut to commercial, and presumably most people who watch this in Japan flipping their collective shit. And that's where I'm going to cut this off, because after the break, the scene continues for the rest of the episode, and if I analyze the whole thing in depth, we're gonna be here all day. Which I'm sure many of you wouldn't mind, but I've got Gravity Falls and Hitman videos to make, as well as a ton of OPs to cover. Plus, I'd probably get hung up on the fact that Satoru could easily just slip out of the seatbelt without unbuckling it. Seriously, it's clearly way bigger than him. <clears throat> and undermine the overall point of this video, which is that this is a really, really strong scene. It uses thematic elements that have been established throughout the series in order to ratchet up the tension to record heights, along with good old-fashioned quality filmmaking. The shot composition and editing here is brilliant, and the decision to leave out music entirely in favor of the low drone of the car subtly helps to put you on the edge of your seat. And it continues to be a great scene after the break. Slow, tense music is added now that that the danger has revealed itself, and through smart use of protracted moments of stillness, the scene plays with your expectations as a viewer to get your heart pumping. And when things move, the animation is gorgeous. The scene also makes use of some remarkable cutaways to fill in context and raise the emotional stakes of what's about to happen, as well as some clever visual metaphors, especially once Satoru plunges into the water and begins to drown. Then, of course, there's its use of the color blue, which has also been a recurring thematic element throughout the series, though I'll save my elaboration on that point in case I decide to do a follow-up episode. Maybe I can call it Blue, You're Through. And I will definitely give you my thoughts on the overall impact of the killer's reveal, as well as the show as a whole, when I do my season recap next month. Yes, What's in a Season is coming back. At any rate, I hope this analysis opened your eyes to something that you haven't seen before and helped you to enjoy the show just a little bit better. And if it did, hey, spread the love. Share it with your friends who are also enjoying Erased. You might help blow their minds too. If you have something to add, or you think I missed something, or there's another great scene that you think I should cover, let me know in the comments. I actually read all of them. And if you want to see more analysis like this, check out some of the other videos on my channel, like this here breakdown of an earlier scene in Erased, or my deconstruction of Nichijou's first opening. And if you enjoy those too, consider subscribing for more things like them every week. Thank you for checking out the video, and thank you especially if you're a patron like the fine folks on screen right now. You guys are helping to fill the hole in my heart.
and in some cases my wallet. As always, this is Jeff Thu, Professional Shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement.